Let's find out from Matty Rose. He joined us back to back. How many times has this happened, Paulie, where you've had a guest back to back days? The guy's never been on the show before, <laughs> okay? He's a sports talk radio host in Calgary. You haven't had Larry Bird on the show back to back days. You haven't had anybody on the back, yet Matty Rose gets to be on the show back to back days? It's unique. Can you guys think, Fritzy, you're the guest booker. Can you ever think of another time where you've had a guest back-to-back days? Not really. Maybe there was a time where there was just breaking news with the same team two days in a row, so we put the person back on, but can't think of who that was. All right, well, he texted me last night, Maddie, you have no idea how close you got to getting reported as junk because I have this text <laughs> message that comes through. It's like 11 o'clock, and I just see a text message, elation. And I'm like, uh, elation from a 403 number, I think it was. I, I, didn't, I didn't put you in my phone, by the way. I already deleted the text. But I see like Good. a 403 number. And then it's like, by the way, this is Maddie Rose. So uh, explain that elation. Matt, you literally went out of your way to text me elation right when the game ended. Tell me about it. I had to tell everybody, everyone that would listen, how relieved we were up in town for this to end in a way that wasn't the Oilers hosting the cup and going the reverse sweep. Um, we saw so many Oilers jerseys wandering around town. I decided to stay at home and watch the game because I wasn't sure how I would behave publicly. And uh, sure enough, we got the result that we wanted. So everyone is feeling elated up here, like a big relief. That's the That's the word, right? Relief? Without a doubt. Like, it was one of our kind of uh, topics on the show today. This relief that you're feeling today is like, what? And a lot of people were talking about, you know, when, when you finally make it home, maybe if you were, you know, clenching for like the last 30 minutes of your drive home, things like that. So people were very relieved that uh, the Oilers were unable to uh, push this thing over the edge. Aren't you guys supposed to be? I feel like I never knew Canadians were such haters. Why are you such a hater? Yeah, but hockey makes us different. Like it's 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 one of those things that we all love and we all get a little bit primal about. So I think that there's a little bit of that gets involved, plus the regional stuff. You guys know what it's like down in the U.S. You have all your U.S. regional rivalries across the country, and that's what we are here. Um, if this was another Canadian team, it wouldn't have been as intense. We wouldn't have cared nearly as much. But because this was the Oilers, it was very important for this to not go well for Edmonton. What would it have been like today if Edmonton won on the show? Oh, I don't know. I was really contemplating about maybe like skipping work if they had won. Um, you can't maybe starting do that. a new job, getting into the trades, uh, picking up something like uh, scaffolding, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. It was going to be crazy. Like, um, even as is, like I mentioned, we saw so many Oilers jerseys and fans hanging around on the streets yesterday, filling up the bars. Like, it was one of those events that you couldn't get a table in downtown Calgary if you were trying to watch the game. So um, everybody was heavily invested. Uh, and every time that, you know, even if you got buddies or they're not buddies, you know, you always want to have the upper hand in those type of rivalries. And uh, Calgary fans got to enjoy it today. We didn't have to do the the whole sad look towards the parade um, you know, raising Connor McDavid's banner. We didn't have to do any of that today. So that was that was relieving for sure. Talking with Matty Rose, co-host of the big show with Russick and Rose on Sportsnet 960 in Calgary, the radio home for the Calgary Flames. So Chakuk, I I missed this, but he shouted you guys out after the game. Evidently. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure you played the audio on your show today. So I'm a little bit confused. I thought he kind of forced his way out, didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't he not want to be there? Explain to me the the Chukuk relationship with Calgary. This is one of those things where, yes, he definitely was. He forced his way out. There was a whole bunch of things that were like I think a lot of people could point to maybe seasons earlier and why he wasn't extended then and, and talk about things like that. Um, but that wasn't the case. So he ended up forcing his hand to leave town. The team has obviously been much worse for it. Uh, but I did think that there are still some people who enjoyed his time here in Canada. Um, I think a lot of people look at Johnny Gaudreau, who left in free agency to Columbus, as kind of maybe a, a worse case than Matthew Kachuk. And and yesterday, to me, like Matthew was a guy who understands how to use the media. Um, his dad played in the NHL. He's got a lot of charisma. And that, to me, was like a, 
a subtle shot at Edmonton while also maybe trying to get back in the good books of Calgary Flames fans a little bit. So, yeah, people in Calgary really love that. What uh, what did you think of Connor McDavid winning the Conn Smythe? Yeah, he was really good. Like, he was the best player of the postseason. You don't break Wayne Gritzky's records and just kind of – not be good doing that. So he was outstanding, uh, wire to wire. Uh, obviously, he didn't have points in the last two games, and that's what a lot of people are going to look at and say, well, you gave the con Smythe to a guy that, okay, his team was down 3 nothing, and then he got them back almost even, but he didn't really change much after that. Um, so there, there was definitely some people – uh, here in Calgary, who were a little bit questionable about it. But I think the thing that made it tough for Florida was that they didn't necessarily have someone who kind of took that step above everybody else on their team. Like you could talk about Alexander Barkov for some games. You could have talked about Sergei Bobrovsky, you know, especially up until game number three. But then he gets shelled for five and 25 minutes of action. And you can't really go on giving the con Smythe to a guy who totally let the Oilers back into the series. So um, I was a little disappointed he didn't come out to get it. That was disappointing. You know, it's the first time since 2003 that someone has won the Conn Smythe and not won the Stanley Cup at the same time. That was J.S. Shiger, who was a goaltender. It was in New Jersey. He played for the Ducks. He came out and he got the Conn Smythe, even though he looked absolutely miserable doing it. So that was one thing that I did kind of wonder about with Connor. Um, that was our other text topic today, is uh, how lonely is the Conn Smythe trophy? Because I imagine he's still sitting in the middle of the rink in Florida. <laughs> Uh, Maddie, really appreciate the time. We'll have you on again when the Flames win the Cup. How about it? See you guys in like 15 years. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. Maddie Rose, co-host of the Big Show with Russick and Rose on Sportsnet 960 in Calgary.